I want to speak today briefly on the man and his mind. So if you're a woman, your title should be the woman and her mind. <laughs> if you're a man, right, the man and his mind. Speaking about man here, mean all of us, man. See, my objective is to get you to appreciate the mind that God has given to you and to think on another level. Nobody knows what is in your bank account until you open your mouth. And nobody can put a limit on your destiny except you yourself. You put a limit on the possibilities of your life. There is no door that is closed unto you except the door you close by yourself in your mind. There are many of us, although God had made provision for our life, we still are limited by our own inadequacies. We ourselves, we think we are not good enough. We think we don't have what it takes. We think there is nothing that is deserving of us based on our family background. Children, brother, mm, me. I'm not even educated. Guess what? Nobody knows whether you're educated or not. Except you tell them. <laughs> I went to an art gallery shop. I entered the place. I told me one art, I think it was about $34,000. I'm looking at the art, I'm like, okay, how do you transport it to me in Ghana? Is it 34 that you can have? Somebody look at me, look. You see, when God created man, the Bible says God placed within the heart of man what is called the dominion mind. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion. So for every man, there is a blessing of God on your life. But that blessing of God, God placed it in your mind. The blessing of God is in your mind. The spiritual endowment is upon you. But the activation of the blessing is based on the way you think. So the scripture says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The difference between the black man and the white man is that the white man treats his children differently from the black man. The black man's erroneous thinking causes him to first think of the limitations of his life. And so the black man is confined by the limitations of his life. Not based on what is not available. You see, the white man thinks of the possibilities of his mind. So when something is not available, the white man thinks of how can I get that which is unavailable to manifest so that becomes available the black man quickly easily after one or two trials confines or conforms to his environment so the scripture says be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind he said do not conform to this world but be ye transformed in other words don't allow your current environment or world to define and confine you into a certain state Romans chapter 12 verse number 1 to 3 I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service he says when you present your body unto God number one you must recognize that I was made by God so when I'm presenting myself I know that there is no defect in me I know I am not disadvantaged of, than somebody else. In other words, nobody has more advantage than me. So that you don't look at your skin, the pigmentation of your skin, and say, because I am black, I am limited. Because I am a woman, I'm limited. Because I am short, I am limited. Because I am tall, I am limited. See, he said, present your body unto God as a living sacrifice in other words when you come and say God this is me all that I need in this life 
I am advantaged by the size of my body. There are many of us, we never pause to enjoy the best of God. We never, see, it's always one thing after the other. One thing after the other. One thing after the other. I, I was happy that our sister was sharing a testimony. Say, I have the best of family. My own mother would not come and take care of my child for more than a month. But my stepmother, you see, until you pause to enjoy. You see, but this same person can say, my mother is wicked. My mother doesn't even love me. But God had put two people in her life. One who would be there. The other who will push you to take responsibility for your own life. Both are the reasons why she is where she is today. Every one of us, God prepares the environment before he places us in. Wherever God has placed you, whatever you will need to succeed, whatever you will need to be joyful, he has placed it there. But your ability to choose your response determines how you live your life. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, when I read this scripture, what comes into my mind is, it is not God who chooses what is acceptable, what his acceptable will is for me. I prove it. In other words, me na make us away. Hey, you na me dream my life. God wants this for me. God wants that for me. And as I embrace it, He manifests. But if I don't embrace it, I don't get it. I was happy when my brother came and said, at the beginning of the week there was dream. I wanted this was happening. This was happening, and it didn't happen because God's plan for you has mitigation measures. Adi e uradi peso ayema ona tefa benkuma or what the or plan B. That's what I mean. God has B for everything that goes off in your life. God is not surprised. He has a plan B. The man and his mind. There's a, there's a mind that you need. You see, the renew of your mind, it does not, you see, it does not happen at new birth. It does not happen the day you got saved. You see, when you were born again, your spirit became alive to God. But your thinking did not change. I'm a Christian. Why is this happening to me? Your thinking has not changed you. That you have given your life to Christ and you fasted 21 days and you started seeing vision. It does not change the way you think. You see, so your thought when you were a sinner is the same thought you have even though you are born again until you make a conscious effort to change the way you think. You have to be intentional about it. You see, most believers are so spirit-minded, so spiritual, that they don't think. We have stopped thinking. We spiritualize everything. Everything is demonic. Hey, I am not saying spirituality is wrong. But I'm telling you that there is a way you think that influences how you feel. Write this down. My mind is involved in my decision-making. You see, there's nothing more potent like a born-again believer whose mind is yielded to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can influence every area of your life. The way you raise your children, the way you think. Do you know that what goes on in your mind influences how your environment looks like? Add some value to your own life and keep your environment clean. It's not for your husband who always leaves his clothes anywhere. For your own sanity and value. My mind is involved in my decisions for advancement, number one. Number two, my mind is involved when I'm dealing with adversity. So you do not just confront the thing only spiritually. But your mind must be involved when you are faced with difficulties and challenges. As a young man, whether you advance or retrogress, your mind is involved. When you are going through financial difficulties, remember, your mind is involved to come out or to stay. The scripture says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. He said, for his anger endures but a moment. In his favor is life. Look at it. Weeping may endure, so God has moved out of the question. His anger endured but a moment. In his favor 
is life. What next? Weeping may endure for a but joy cometh in the morning. It means that you determine when the joy should rise. You determine when your darkness times end, not somebody else. You determine when you will let go of the bad experience, the heartbreak, and choose to love again. You determine it. Brother, you have just struggle. You determine when it ends. Because you are so focused on one thing. You are focused on one thing, and so as long as that has not yet opened, you think that is all to your life. Let me tell you something. You can pursue one dream for 10 years. It will open up. But before the 10 years open, you must have a mind to find other things you can do on the side to generate some revenue to sustain you until your 10 opens. You're saying, man of God, I'm not married. There's nobody in my life. Begin to add some value to your life so that when the man comes, he will not think that you're a sicadicious lady who doesn't have and be able to come and throw his weight around you. No, 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 no. Build an ecosystem, an ability to earn around yourself so that by the time the man comes, he's coming to add to you, not to provide for you. There are two different things. The Bible says, I will create a help meet. Everybody who marries, you are, you've married somebody who is there to help meet what? A need. It could be one. One. How many? Sometimes the man comes in, he doesn't have money. He's there to just give you companionship. So you must feed yourself. He's there to do what? Help me to what? One need. Will you build a house? No, I'm waiting when I marry. Will you do this? No, I'm waiting. Well, I'm looking for a man who has money. You have a mental problem. I was speaking to some lady in an aeroplane. She says, oh, no, no, I need a man who has money. I said, sister, sister he's, he's an aeroplane. When, when it comes to you, getting money is not difficult. She said, no. Why? I said, you are an immigration officer. And as an immigration officer, the discipline to go through the training alone is an asset you have. It means that when you set your mind on a thing, you can achieve it. I said, what you need from a man is the same thing God needs from us. She looked at my face. I said, God has everything in this world except one thing. She says, what? I said, companionship. I said, God does not have companionship. That's why he created us. He had angels. He could not relate. When God wants to sit with the angel, he has too much wings. He can't sit with him. So he created us without wings. <laughs> in our likeness. In his likeness. So that he can... The Bible says at the cool of the day, God came to Adam to talk to him. That is what God wants. Relationship. What we want is relationship. So you are there for a relationship. Somebody you can relate with. What does it mean to relate? Somebody that you can have similar shared interest that you can relate on that level. The person is not there to be your alpha and omega and solve your family problems. For God did not create him to be a, a partaker of orphans. So your husband is not there to take care of you because you are an orphan. You are not going to marry because the woman is the one who is coming to take care of you and your family. That's a foolish way of thinking. You are marrying for companionship. Somebody you can chat with, laugh with, play the fool with. Somebody that you are sure on the day when you are on your sick bed, the person will be dead. The man and his mind. So I say my mind is involved in my decision making. It's involved in my decisions for advancement. Number three, it's involved when I'm dealing with adversity. And it's involved in my decision for abundance. There are many of us, we do not value ourselves. We go and all we are looking for is the cheapest in there. We want the cheapest room, the cheapest clothes. The che Please, are you that cheap? He's not all me. No, 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 no. See, every one of you. Invest some money in buying something quality. The day you buy a more expensive thing for you, something will switch in your head. You'll be like, I think I deserve better. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First Thess Thessalonians 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless up to the coming of our Lord Jesus. So we see in this scripture that man is made of three. Spirit, soul, and body. 
And he says that the very God of peace sanctify you holy. In other words, when I come to God, God expects every area of my life to be better. Amen. You see, man would only prosper relative to the development of his total being. It's not just about one area. Your, the quality of your marriage or your relationship must be better. Don't just get a guy who wants to just press your breast and leave you. Excuse me, are you, are, are you a testing kit? No. Can I be brutally honest with you this morning? When I was going up, I told myself that I'm not a testing kit for another lady to see my nakedness and eat some and go. Then in future, when I become great, he'll look at me and say, oh, this one, I conquer. You conquer. No, my body is too precious. You can't conquer. Everybody in this set, add value to your own life. Brother, add value. Don't waste your time on stupid people. There are some people, they don't deserve your time. You are on a, you are on a whole new level. Do you know God comes to check up on you every time? He comes to check what you are doing. My question is, have you been adding value to your own life? Touch your neighbor and say, Pastor is speaking to you. Pastor. Write this down. I will only experience the manifested blessing of God to the degree that I develop my soul. I will only experience the manifested blessing of God to the degree that I develop my soul. What do I mean? When I develop my mind, I experience the manifest blessing of God. When I develop my will, my will to do or to choose, my will, my will to choose, my will to walk away from things that I think that I deserve better. The blessing will only come. There are many of us, we are in relationships, we know it's not working. The boy is sleeping around, we are still with him. See, the day you feel that, no, I'm more valuable than this, that's the day you meet somebody better. He will never fail you. It's the way you can. I enter into meetings with that money. And the respect is more because you don't know what's in my pocket. And I go across my leg and sit down. That's why I, why I learned how to drink coffee. And when that meeting is not a coffee meeting, do you know what I order? I say, give me soda. Give me lime and ice. I'm a big boy. I don't drink alcohol. But what I'm drinking, you have to be a big boy to drink it. So I learned how to drink it in the house. Because some of the things is acquired taste. I said what? I developed what? My mind, my will, and my imaginations. My emotions and my intellect. That's what the soul is involved in. Your emotions, it's not everything that you outburst it. Control your emotion. It's not everything that you talk about. Control your emotion. One of the most powerful emotions you should control. And when somebody misbehaves and you look at the person and smile, then you walk away. Look at the person focused. Smile. And say, I have to go. Goes, oh, they'll follow you and beg you. That, that's, see, that's capacity. Someone say capacity. Isaiah 26 verse 3. He says, this is what God promises us. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Listen to me. Listen, write this down. Write this down. <laughs> How I focus and control my mind determines my emotional state. What does it mean? What I mean is the amount of peace Papa, I experience is determined by the focus of my mind. As a business person, the amount of peace you enjoy is determined by the focus of your mind. What are you focused on? Looking unto Jesus, the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. The peace I enjoy is determined by the focus of my mind. What are you focused on? Brothers and sisters, what are you focused on? Come here, Rudy. What are you focused on? Sister, what are you focused on? For the raising up of your children, what are you? You see, you're taking your children to school because oh, when they have classmates, they can get employment. No! 
he will employ the people. So I am putting instructions to position him in a place where he will be an employer, not an employee. If you go and work for somebody, it's just for experience. Focus your mind. In the raising up of your children, sit them down and reshape the mind of your daughters and your sons. Faith Life Church, there is no way, if you follow the teachings I teach, there is no way any of you will go to that you will not break through. Me, my name is Daniel Yawemchi. I know what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you how to live the faith life. And the faith life involves the use of your mind. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. The strongholds mentioned in verse 4, they are thought patterns. It means that the world that you are dealing with, it has to do with thought. What is the devil bombarding you, my guy? You know, you don't have this, you don't have... <laughs> Trump does not drink alcohol. He does not smoke. <laughs> Hello? Yet he owns an alcoholic beverage company. <laughs> he owns a casino. And yet his children don't go to nightclub. And then guess what? He told his children, I've not given anybody to be the one who succeed me. All my children, I'll give you part of my business, rise through the ranks, and I'll take over. If your, if your part I give you becomes successful, I'll raise you. The one who overall becomes successful and achieves year-on-year -year success, faces difficulties and overcome, will be the one who will be chairman when I'm no more. If you like, drink alcohol. It's not my matter. None of these children drink alcohol. Hillary Clinton, in competing with Donald Trump, when they ask, what one thing can you talk about Donald Trump? He says, there's one thing that nobody can take away from this man. is the way he's raised his children. He said, you can call him names. He's raised his children to be responsible people. Listen to me. In this life, you must, of a necessity, take responsibility for your life and the outcome of your future. What it means is you take responsibility for your life today and how it will play out tomorrow. And if you have children, take responsibility for your children's future. Because of my son, there are some things I won't do. Because there's a kind of image I want to see. I want to see. And don't think your children are not observing you. One of my daughters called me and told me that he was having a, a conversation with the husband and it looks like it was a banter. One of the daughters said to the, the, the hey, he said, Mommy, are you fighting with daddy? He said, no, 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 we are just arguing. Hey, this will happen. He says, but you raise your voice. The children are saying, you raise your voice. Brother, for the sake of your future, remember it is your future. You see, your children are a representation of you. Let me tell you something, Faith Life Church. You represent me. Whether I like it or not, you represent me. When I'm there or not, you represent me. So if I'm extremely successful and you are not, it means I'm not a good father. I will not sit down and have a very good marriage by the grace of God and your marriage is not working. I have to teach you, take responsibility for your life. Look healthy for you. It's not for somebody else. Brother, do you know when I traveled, I wanted to exercise. I raised one leg like this and one leg like that. Uh, beginning, I was doing this. I was shaking. There's no stamina. The Bible says... Bodily exercise profits little. Don't wait to get divorced before your stomach will go down. The stomach is not for your husband, it's on your body. You see, before you came to the Lord, your head got messed up. Folks messed up your mind with their erroneous beliefs and myth and old school thinking. And they didn't know that you were doing it. Your mind became infused and contaminated with a way of thinking that is contrary to God. That's what a stronghold is. They controlled the way you think. Your thought patterns were shaped by, hey, if you are there, and you have phone call, you say, what is your life? What is your life? Look at your life. Your husband told you, don't wear jeans. It's not good. Don't wear shorts. Opia Bontino driver, no, eh? 
Some people have time for their skin. Others, they are wasting it. You have put the money in the bank, waiting that in future, when you have a problem, you will spend it. Can I ask you a question? When will the future come? Yet, when, you see, you say you don't have money. Yet, when there's a problem, you can get money to go and solve rubbish. Somebody is dead. Somebody is married. So, we have to go and give them something. Yet, you yourself, you have never given yourself anything. So, some of us are like, me, the woman can't tell me anything. So, you are married. Your word is a law. You are a fool. The reason why the person is in your life is that will help you become a better person. Not... Hey, are you not my wife? There are a lot of pastors, their marriage is not working. Because for them, their word is a law. Bros, you a pastor in the pulpit. When you get home, humble yourself. You're a husband. Hey, I'm a boss in the office. Hey, do you know who I am? Oh, no. I don't know because you yourself, you don't even know who you are. So when your husband talks to you, all you think about is defense. Who, who said when you are wrong, you should not accept Oh, yeah, I got it wrong. See, in your mind, you may be right, but when your partner tells you that this thing that you are doing is not right, acknowledge, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that that's how it makes you feel. I'm so sorry. I'll work on it. That is maturity. Your mind. So man's thinking has been restricted by carnality. Right. It's been compromised by clutter. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 tells us to bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. What it means is my thinking must come in line with how God wants me to think. It means that I must know that the Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I must enjoy the best of God. I must understand that God has aligned people to come into my life who come to add value to me and not subtract. And when God tries to com communicate to me and I don't get, he will send people around me to advise me on the best way to go. You see, we are so used to me, I must win. It has to be me so that that carnality is what is affecting us so that the best of God we don't get. So I say carnality. So I say carnality. Yeah, we are too carnal. We get emotional by everything. See, yes, there's nothing wrong with being emotional. But once you get emotional, after a while, get down and you yourself assess the situation. One day, one of my daughters came to see me about her husband, and she was talking. I was there with Mr. AJ, and we were talking. As we were talking with Pastor AJ, I was telling my daughter, you have not done this, you have not done this, you have not done this. She got angry. See, you are not even listening to me. You are, you are just blaming it on me. I said, what do you want? You want your marriage resolved, or you want to be right? Choose one. My daughter got angry. So I, I excused and I said, Pastor, you, you talk to her, let me go because some question I say I'm so too much. I, I can't lie. If the thing is wrong, it's wrong. Is, is that not it? That you are my daughter, so you are fooling. I should tell you you are right. Is that what you want? Who won that in this head? Mm. I left my daughter. She said when she was going home, she now she said, But what Pastor Dan is saying is true too. It's true. <laughs> She decided to change. Her marriage is one of the best in this church. Sometimes, don't chip in yourself for people. It's not, it's not what you will eat. Sometimes, drink water and sleep. And you have over you back up. Listen, what I'm teaching you, you won't hear it anywhere. If it's in a course or in a path, you make up. Because Michelle or Kwema, I was saying to me, I said, oh, can we just do breakfast or lunch? Man's creative thinking is compromised by what? Clutter. Many of us that we have so many unnecessary, foolish things on our mind that we can't think right. Praise the Lord. We have our minds cluttered with pornography. We have our minds cluttered with our past bad experience in our relationships. In the way we were raised, we saw we suspect every woman we, 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 everybody is a witch all these things are foolish thinking why do you think a witch has more power than your God so when you are faced with any small difficulty you immediately jump to spirituality you want warfare so that's how come look across it, it's not wrong but everything is ah, everything is just about your emotions somebody, somebody who doesn't like you or somebody 
those things, eh, it clutters your mind. See, it makes you suspect everybody and think that everybody is there to get you. As long as you are living a life thinking that everybody is out there to get you and not that everybody has been aligned to be a blessing, there is no way you can go forward. Be careful the things you pray. As long as you keep praying, something is either following you or people don't like you. Echo binanka when you those rubbish. Stop listening to them. God have aligned people to be a blessing. They may come with a different mind, but as you engage, because you are God's child, even what they meant for evil will be turned out for your good. Look at what the Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 7 to 8. He says, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You see, when my mind is cluttered, I cannot consider everything I need to consider and make a bad decision. When I met Lady Irene, somebody told me, a prophet told me that she would waste my time. She said, Come, she but I'm saying to you, sometimes there'll be some people that, that, that everybody says something bad, but sometimes as you relate with them, you would find a way to get around them and get what you want. Yes. Not all good things come in good packages. So how do I maximize my mind? Number one, first, I need to believe that there's a better way of doing things. I need to what? In other words, no matter what I'm doing now or how successful I am at it, I must believe that there's a better way of doing it. Every area of your life, health, eating, relationships, there's a better way. There's a... You see, if man has stopped with calculator, wouldn't he have developed the computer? There's a better way of doing things. Number two, I must be able to focus intensely without distractions. I must what? I must be able to what? Focus intensely without distractions. Because focus will supersede intelligence in a day. No matter how intelligent you are, if you are not focused, you won't get anything done. I read a story of a man who went to a hardware store and bought what they told him was contraption. Like a, he bought a trap to catch a pro or mouse. He like a mouse trap. He went to buy this mouse trap. Then he brought it to the house. After three hours, the thing was not working. So he came back and told the guy that the trap is not working. The trap is what? Because the rat or the squirrel has found a way to get around it. So when he brought it to the guy, he told the guy, this thing is not working. It's not working. It's not working. So the guy asked him that it was intelligent men that put man on the moon. And you are telling me that you, you can't keep the rat out of your house. Then, when he said that, the guy said, no, 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 because the thing is not working. Then the man said to him, how many hours did you use to trap the animal? He says, three hours. He says, let me tell you something. Let me give you a simple advice. This rat or this opro or squirrel, all his life, he knows that there would always be a trap to stop him from getting away or to, from eating. Because he has to eat to survive. So all his life, he's focused on how to get away traps and, and things that will limit him from entering into your house to eat, but he must eat. So he's so focused on his goal. Are you focused on your goal? For you today. Except you have a single vision, a focused goal, that this is what I want to achieve. Everything will be a distraction. Everything would take your mind. I have made a decision. I will have one of the best marriages. I spend more times and more books on marriage than any other topic. Because you, if I kill myself, the day I do one mistake, God forbid, put them in Kobe, you will leave me. The only person who will not leave me will be my wife. So I invest into it. So as I'm investing into your life, I'm investing into the quality of my own life. 
what are you investing in what are you focused on for your whole life your education are you focused you want to play sport are you focused you want to have career advancement how focused are you adding value are you educating yourself are, are you saving money to to improve upon your the quality of your life so that you can have better opportunities than where you are today mind play a major role for you number three i must have a systematic approach to problem solving i must have what a systematic word to problem solving Whenever you have a problem, it overwhelms you because it's a problem. But when you, you sit down to think, okay, how do I get around this? It breaks that overwhelming presence and now you can solve it. Do you know how I solve problems? Little by little. What is it that is so difficult you are trying to rise out of it? You see, people don't understand that God didn't create the world so Adam and Eve could just sit down and eat grapes or food or bangu. You see, God created man, put him in this beautiful environment and challenged man to make the best out of it. He said to Adam, he said to Adam, tend it and keep it. Whatever you want in this life, you have to work on it so that you can enjoy from it. You work on it, then you enjoy from it. He said to Adam that we should replenish the whole earth. So man of God, what do I do? Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. What do I do? How do I think? Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. So when somebody sends you a bad report, don't listen to it. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So whenever you have to think about something, ask yourself, this thing that I'm thinking about, is it true? based on the word of God this thing I'm thinking about is it honest that a man says he doesn't love you because you are something something is it an honest truth that you are he says this thing I'm thinking about is it pure is it coming from a pure motivation or the person is just trying to put me in a mental state where I am disoriented and I can't go for it this thing is it a good report that I must take time to think about? When the devil tells you, you are not lovable because your body is not nice, that's why your husband is cheating on you, it's a lie. A dog will always be a dog. He has nothing to do with you. What they send to you, is it praise? Is it something you can praise about it? I pray for everybody in this room. As I bring my sermon to a close, that from this day, your mind will change. You will carry yourself as a king's kid. You will carry yourself as a daughter of God. You will walk in peace. You would walk in confidence. You walk in this confidence assurance that he who has promised you, faithful is he that promised the same will keep it. I pray for you. That the honor of God will rest upon you. That the blessing of heaven will be upon your life. That the goodness of God will manifest in your life. That your mind will not be conditioned erroneously. But your erroneous conditioning will be corrected. I pray that the Lord will renew your mind. That you believe that your success is not somebody else's responsibility. From this day, may your mind be conditioned to think positively you will be optimistic of life you will know that the best is yet to come you will know that God's plan will work for you it will not just work for somebody else God's plan will work for you it will work for you 
Someone say God's plan will work for me. In the name of Jesus. Everybody open your eyes. Help me to repeat this. Say, I choose to think correctly. One more time. Say, I choose to think correctly. Number two, say, I choose to think concretely. One more time. Say, I choose to think concretely. Say, I control my thinking. Say, I control what I focus my attention on. Say, I choose to think critically. I see beyond the moment and I make good decisions for my life. Now put your hands together for Jesus.